It's the box cup, but he's coming back live on this pre recorded podcast. It's Don and Greg, and they have eggs that they're gonna enjoy this. Beautiful day, we've got doggy mm-hmm. meat to make a burrow burrito. Yeah, yeah, now yeah, let's yeah, get yeah, over yeah. the song and get into the show. Right now. Hey, how's hey it going? guys. How are you? I'm good. good. How about you? I'm good too. How are well, you? Fine. How actually. Are, just fine? Just fine. Not great. Not great. Fine. Okay. Because I've made some mistakes. Yes, haven't we all? But there's coming back. There's but always there's, coming back from them. There's always making lemonade out of lemons. As we're supposed to do. But in this case, I'm turning a donkey into a burrito. Into dinner. Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. I'm sorry. If you can... Uh, you you there, thank you again for joining us. Uh, I'm Don, that's Greg, and currently we're in a new boxcar, and what we're doing, if you can uh, hear this in the background here, which you'll hear periodically throughout the show... Yeah, look at that. Yeah, that's nice. What we're doing is we've got... We had a donkey, a royal donkey, uh, for a couple of weeks, and it was sweet. Uh, he helped us... Uh, pull our box cars to and from. He was, you know, he 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 transported us places. He was a good companion, very very chill, nice dude. He was a nice ride. But, um, but unfortunately, uh, a few uh, a little a few days ago, uh, Greg was, um, you know, kind of shooting off his uh, finger laser as he's wont to do since he got his new robot hand, and uh, and inadvertently shot uh, Donkey right in the head with uh, with one of those lasers. And so now, once Donkey's brains were splattered, we were like, hey. You know, I'm not going to drag this guy around or whatever. Why don't we set up the spit right now and start cooking, homeboy? That's the yeah. best way to respect it his was, memory. He would have liked it that way. I think so. He I, always knew he was going to be eaten. We talked about it constantly. Yeah. So he was. Uh, he was not a fan of me. I was. Um, no. Never got close to you, Greg. Always, no. uh, always kind of shimmied away from you a little bit whenever you'd come close, kind of made noises. I don't understand why. It might be the metallic hand. I'll tell you, at at night, when the moon glints off that thing, threatening. Not friendly, not approachable. Thank you. It means a lot. It's actually. the truth. It's the truth. Thank you. You know what you start doing? Wearing hoodies. You wear like a hoodie, and you let only your metallic hand show at night? Dude, you're going to freak people out. Oh, especially since like my one sleeve is like... Right when when you reach the elbow, it's just sleeve. There's there's nothing else. Yes, perfect. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. It's too bad that I don't wear hoodies very often. Well, we can always try and find you one. We don't find many good ones, and the ones we do. Yeah, find... they're not great. It's like it's the equivalent of going to Ragstock. That's like this dumpy like used clothing store here in Chicago. Ragstock. Mm-hmm. Never been. Never. Been. Yeah, they keep stock of rags. Sounds useful for dishwashers and, you know, homeowners alike. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah? Yeah. Not all the time, though. Are they out of stock of rags sometimes at rag stock? You'd be surprised how often they're out of stock of rags. Hmm. Maybe that's just for you, Especially around Halloween. Maybe Like, Halloween season, all of a sudden, all the rags are gone. Hmm. It's just these, like, shitty old recycled costumes. I'm like, I don't need that. I just need a rag. It's not why I came. Well. What do you expect me to do? Go into Target? I'm banned. Uh, yeah, right, exactly. You're gonna, you want me to try that again? You're right across the street. There's you a database of, of places that I'm not allowed to. Exactly. Because, in case you don't know, Greg and I are homeless. We uh, reside in Chicago where we can, and week to week we try and get uh, an abandoned boxcar together, and uh, and we join up and you know try and talk about some some stuff that we have learned or watched or listened to or... You know, red the come week across prior. on the beaten path. Yes, some human being uh, whose energy touched ours uh, as we make our way through this mortal coil and all that shit. Yeah, we just pressed our tips together and absorbed all their energy and gingerly, always gingerly touching those. I'm tips. not crazy about ginger; it's all too tart. Good for the stomach. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, I'd rather ginger, have like ginger like snaps. coffee. Well, yeah, coffee's okay as long as it you know whole bean. I'm all about that whole bean coffee. You mm-hmm. ever have that stuff? No, I've had the hot bean water, though. 
I know that's what we've been getting uh, a lot, and I don't like it at all. It's yeah. not comparable. See what to they're coffee. what they've been doing is that they've been getting like a can of like black beans, and instead of putting coffee in the filter, they just pour the beans in there. Yeah, and then the and then the hot water comes through. It's like oh great, mm. it's it tastes like puree. There's definitely. I'd still, rather it drink the liquid that the beans came in. Yes, yes, the it, stuff that gives you the E. coli. E. coli. That's what I said. E. coli. Well, E. coli is the guy that lives down outside the nuclear power plant that's uh, just off of Oh, uh, you the know, guy with Wabash. like the burnt, fucked up face? Yes, that's E. coli. E. coli is this disgusting bacteria that people get from eating raw spinach oh, and shit like that. Yeah, okay. different, different. E. coli is, uh, you Sorry, know, he is my disgusting. Bad. That's like, okay. I just mistake, don't want him to get mistakes, offended. Mistakes come across, and I'm glad to have Don on the show to make sure that I am fully up to date. On the latest of human diseases. Well, the thing is, it, I just don't want E. coli to get offended. Do you want that ra- radiation-faced dude marching into our box car? I'm afraid that I might catch it if he touches me. Totally, totally. I don't want any. I don't want any part of that dude. I don't want him anywhere near here. So I just didn't want him to get offended by us mispronouncing his name or yeah. anything like that. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, uh, what Greg and I are doing here, you know, right this week we've got this, you know, donkey on the spit here. We're roasting him over the fire. We we have the box car tilted on its side this week, and we have one of the windows open on the ceiling to vent this smoke that's coming up from the donkey. But it smells really good in here. It's uh, a nice Nice light fire. We've been slow roasting him now for how long? If you say about six, seven hours. Seven hours, and I like that watch. Where Thank did you. you find that guy? Uh, That's good. Might have robbed a Coles. Coles, you robbed a Coles. Maybe. Really? Uh, for the watch? Uh, for jeans. Oh, oh! You do have some new jeans too. Yeah. Wow, they're they're flashy, aren't they? I'm t- dude. Between the new jeans, this watch, your robot hand, if we can find you a hoodie, I mean, you're you're threatening on a very basic human level. You're not homeless guy threatening. You're normal guy threatening. Oh man, I haven't been normal guy threatening in years. Something to be excited about. I Something guess. to shoot for. <laughs> well, you know, not you know literally. Don't point at me anymore. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did blow that donkey's brains. Yeah, off. I. You do need to be more careful with that. You. You know that now. Hey, right? this is the testing period right now, and you know it's it's worked. Um, they recognized me when I came to the store, though. I thought that the robot hand would like kind of like throw them off, but they knew. Oh, they just they they had like a face scanner. They're like, oh, yep, that that's that uh, Greg oh. Roderick guy, the guy that has constantly broken in, burned, destroyed, havoced, never robbed until today. Well, I thought I'd change it up. Then they'll add that to the list. Oh right, shit. So. But you are sitting here with some new jeans. Uh, again, we're still off the grid. Uh, hopefully, nobody. I, it's not. There's not a ton of smoke, so I'm not worried about someone being attracted to that. We always do make a good amount of noise while we're doing the podcast. But I'm hoping that we can record this now. Once we're done, our meal will be finished. We'll scarf that down, pack up what's left, and then just dis- we're gonna let the fire go and just consume the box car, and then uh, and then we'll and be then into the night. And again. then we'll see where the fire goes. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. Mm-hmm. Just just like everything else, see where the wind takes it. Right? That's what f- life philosophy. I'm sure fire <laughs> operates the same way. <laughs> it's a lot of people down there. Let's send a message. And there already was some kind of Chicago fire, right? Yeah. Why not a second one? You know, see- this one caused by a donkey. Hey, hey, sequels. Always. Everybody loves them. Yeah, everyone loves a sequel. Everyone's making them all the time. Except the one that I just recently saw. What was that? Oh, man. Donnie Boy. Chipmunks, the squeakquel. No, it was Chipmunks the Third. Oh. When they were stranded on the island with with David Cross. Oh. No, no, I'm kidding. (laughs) Okay, good. I was really upset that you'd watched that. Uh, I'm very happy that that, uh, David Cross was very cross with his hatred of that movie. Sure. Uh, I remember when... I think it was when Conan first got his show on TBS. David Cross was one of his first guests for the new show. Uh huh. And they were interviewing him about the new, the squeakle. Oh, good lord! And he just went. Uh, I showed up. I pretended that there were uh, CGI squirrels all over my body, and I got paid like three million dollars. There you go. That's the life right there. That's that's the life. But uh, what did you really watch? What I really watched, unfortunately was Pacific Rim Uprising. Oh, boy. So, for those who are not aware, Pacific Rim was a film by Guillermo del Toro that was released in 2012? 
2013? Around there. Around there. And it's this great homage to Japanese giant mecha and kaiju movies. Right. Kaiju being giant alien creatures. Or just giant monsters. Right, 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 right. Giant monsters. Uh, but it was it was such a fun action movie. It's mm-hmm. all about teamwork. There's never, like, a romantic subplot. Like, right. There's never that, like, romantic chemistry between the two main characters. The chemistry is pure friendship. Like, the whole thing is about friendship and camaraderie and fighting together against a, a, a great evil. It's yeah, like, brothering it's, up. It's it's what every, like, Japanese anime ever does. Yeah. But the action was super memorable. Just watching the robots and the kaiju beat the absolute shit out of each other was such a joy. It's a Del Toro movie, so it looks good. It looks amazing. Yeah. It had a great cast. It had, uh, it had uh, shit, Charlie Day. It had... Uh, Charlie Hunnam. Charlie Hunnam, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what's his name? Fucking Hellboy. Idr- Idris Elba. Idris Elba kills it. Yeah. He's like their speech maker. Oh, Ron Perlman. Ron That's Perlman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's like an arms dealer yeah. in, in like Tokyo. Yeah, Del Just, Toro loves Ron Perlman. Well, yeah, they're, they're like, bros. They're like best friends. Yeah, they're buds. Whenever Guillermo Del Toro does a movie, like Ron Perlman's just like, He's going to do something, even uh, if it's just his voice, even yeah. if it's just his voice, he's going to be in it. But unfortunately, so, so we, that was the first Pacific Rim movie we were just descri- describing. And to, just to give a quick summation, because they, they kind of do it at the beginning of, of two. But what happened was uh, they found out what happened, where the monsters are coming from. They're coming from a different dimension, being mind controlled by aliens called the Precursors. So they blow them up. And kill them all, close the rift, no more monsters can get through. Right. Everything's a okay. It's now ten years later, and Edris Elba's like son, who's never mentioned in the first movie. Yeah, right, exactly. Because he has a daughter, quote unquote, his adopted daughter Mako. Right. She makes an appearance in this. Okay. And uh there's there's a few scenes of, you know, sibling rivalry between Mako and and uh, John Great. Boyega's character. Great. Who plays the lead Who in plays Pacific the lead Rim in 2. This. Right. And I love I love John Boyega. I think he does a pretty good job. Like, all the actors in this movie do the best they can. Yeah. It's just that the, the script fucking sucks. Oh, boy. It sucks. It spends the first 45 to 50 minutes doing plot shit that is not the point of Pacific Rim. Oh, man, just needless exposition. It's a lot of exposition about, like, what's happened in the last ten years. How come John Boyega's son is... In, how come John Boyega isn't part of the army? Right. What has been happening? Uh-huh. And it's a lot of boring, dumb bullshit until the actual monster shit happens at the last half an hour. Oh. And, and like, there are a couple really, really good action sequences yeah uh so in the plot of this it's 10 years later after the war when all of a sudden there uh this company is trying to make uh automated drone jaegers which are the the giant robots right uh the megazords if you will the megazords while they're trying to show off uh the new drones or whatever at the un uh an unknown rogue jaeger attacks them Fucking rogue Jaegers. Fucking rogues. Uh, and that spawns this huge, like, where did this robot come from? Oh, are the kaiju coming back? How could they come back? <laughs> and then they, they come back. Uh, someone made, I, I think it was Andre Blacknerd from YouTube. Because I, I, I had, for those who don't know, I have an LCD TV in my hand. In the robotic hand. In the robotic hand, so yeah. I'm able to connect to YouTube and watch a bunch of shit whenever I need. Which has been really great. But I watched the review by um, Andre Black Nerd on YouTube, and he made constant comparisons to the Power Rangers. Oh. For the entire movie. There you go. Because, remember in the first movie, like, there's Gypsy Danger. That's mm-hmm. our that's our main Jaeger. It's our main group. They're pretty much the only ones that live for the entire movie. Right. Everyone else kind of just shows up and dies. Yeah. This one tries to really focus in on who the pilots are. Oh. And they're all teenagers. And they all die and at the end? And they're all referenced as rangers. One dies. Okay. They kill one, and they keep the rest of them alive. There's like eight of them. Uh, so it never really feels like there's a huge amount of loss happening. 
So, and that to me right there, that sounds bad because to me, the only reason for 45 minutes of needless exposition at the beginning of a movie is to set up a lot of loss. Which, That's is, the what, o- which is what the first movie did perfectly. Yes. So it starts, like, it starts out with that just quick five minutes. Kaiju. Right. These are kaiju. And they are dangerous. They've been doing it for a decade. And it hook, with a battle at the beginning, it kind of hooks you in. With a battle in. at the beginning, yeah. shows the loss of the main character's brother, his partner, and shows that he's after his brother died, he was like, nah, fuck this. I don't want to do this anymore. Right, he walks away Where from John it. John Boyega's character, his whole deal was he got into a fight with his best friend, who is now his partner again when he rejoins the Jaeger army. Mm-hmm. They got into an argument, and Edris Elba kicked him off the squad a year before Gypsy Danger was recruited. Okay. So that's how they try and fit him into the plot, that, oh, a year before all the events and all the cool shit happened, and uh, and my son was, I disowned him. And even though the world was ending, we didn't end up actually needing any more uh, pilots, even though everyone else died. Because he tried to pilot a Jaeger by himself. So he could be Big Dick McCool guy. And we don't like those. And even though everyone was dying, I didn't think it was worth uh, uh, compromising my decision to punish my boy. My boy. Yeah, my that's... Sweet boy. Okay, so that sounds really dumb. It's really dumb. Uh, they show off... So they recreate Gypsy, but it's now, like... It's not Gypsy Danger. I think it was, like, Gypsy Omega. It's Frank and Gypsy. It's uh, it's like Gypsy Resurrection. It's Gypsy yeah. X. Yeah, like Frankenstein. Yeah. Yeah, like... They, they build it up for, like... To look exactly like it. Uh huh. Um, they didn't fucking revamp it. Like, give it some souped-up missiles or any exact, shit. It looks exactly the same. It Come functions on. exactly the same. You know what they should have done is mixed it with the fish guy from Lady in the Water and fucking had like a giant fucking Jaeger fish man just swimming with the kaiju that. and shit. But Let's they, blend this it. Movie, Del this Toro. movie didn't think about its world too much. It constantly thought about, oh, we have to try and like amp up the story because no one liked the story in the first one. Like, yes. The story was fine. It was competent. It tied the action scenes together. And because that's what we're here for. It's like, it's which, like bitching and moaning that you want a good story out of The Raid. Right, right. Which, the Raid is action. And it's about the cinematography of it. Exactly. And all those things that you just mentioned, Del Toro knows that. A fucking, like, a hallmark of Del Toro movies is, is that they look good and, and the plot good. And the plot is not usually dynamite. No. The, the, the writing is just okay. There's some campy characters character jokes but he knows that you're there for the visuals and that's what takes you through the movie you don't need a compelling like story and characters and that shit you want it you want something that looks cool and like good fights and that's kind of what pacific rim is about yeah but pacific rim is like very competent right two doesn't feel as competent Mm, like a little scattered it's a little scattered um there are moments that i thought like the action was cool towards the end but uh, like I said before, it never amounts to anything that the first movie didn't do that was better. The reveal of the villain, too, is also what I want to bring in the Power Rangers uh-huh. reference. Because he very... like th- The villain felt like... Because I'm, I'm not going to spoil who the villain is. The reveal of who the villain is is fucking dumb. Okay. Uh, but the villain is standing off in the corner watching the kaiju fight the... Uh, Jaegers, the, the Jaegers. Just fapping? And no, he's doing what Rita Revolta does from fucking Power Rangers. Yes! Me! Wow! <laughs> the villain does like some sign shit to actually make the Jaegers more power- or, or the, the kaiju to become more powerful. Do they scream like Rita from Power Rangers? Like, <laughs> When you find out who is playing the villain, then you'd be like, yep, that's that's it. Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm not well, going to reveal who the villain is. Well, I, I, that actually sounds... Because I, I also don't want... I don't really want people watching this. <laughs> well, they, they just spoil it! They, 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 end the, they end the movie with uh, the villain locked up in a room, and they're like, Will, you tell your, your precursor buddies that we're coming to them. We're going to find them. We're going to beat them up. And then the fucking... Into, into credits. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Not good. This sounds horrible. It's it's not good. Sounds like a shit film. It's it it's not complete shit though. It's mediocre. Mm. Like 
there's nothing about it that made me go, wow, that was some spectacle. Wow, that was so cool looking. The, mm-hmm. the, the cinematography was done so well. It's just like, it's there. And you didn't... And it's too much of it. And w- when you left, did you feel like it was worth having sat through the movie? Or did you feel like it? you wished you could have gotten that time back? I feel like I wish I a future version of myself went, no. Just spend it a just tap, time. Just tap on my shoulder. Go see Ready Player One. Oh, Ready Player One. Oh, Ready Player One. It's we'll that, you know what that movie's about? It's about video games. Hey, do you remember Star Wars? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> do you remember Tyrannosaurus Rex? Oh, who could forget with the tiny arms? Do you remember the Iron Giant and his big gun? I can, I can recall that. And he was silent and grunted all the time. Well, I got the movie for you. It's called Ready Player One. You play a video game. It's like the Call of Duty. You shoot things. There's laser beams flying all over. This dude is like, oh, I'm an anime character. All our movie posters are recreations of famous movie posters. My God. It's so meta. Is that that movie? Is that put? Is that directed by that guy, Steven Splugeberg? The most recognized and beloved director of all time. Yeah. Um, who did not direct uh, Pacific Rim 2. You know who did direct Pacific Rim 2? Not Guillermo del Toro. Really? Who no. was it? It was the creator and writer of Spartacus. The show? The show. And I was like, yep, that seems very Spartacus. Damn it, it seems very cheap, very bad, very dumb. Spartacus got better as it went along. This movie does not... S- well, actually, this get, movie you, sounds like it did get better as it went along. Toward the it end. Did, it did. That's he's, a Spartacus thing, too. He sucks at beginnings. Yeah, he does. He just sucks. As long as you give him 75% of the length of whatever you're watching, he'll start to get better toward the end. And that's... In the end, that's what this movie's worst problem is. It tries to recreate Guillermo del Toro's magic. You can't. Yeah, you can't. That man has such a visual style. It's very specific. It's unique. You cannot fucking replicate it. No, no, you cannot mimic that stuff. (sighs) Ooh, mimic. Oh, you know what's another thing I really hated about it, too? What? All the action sequences take place during the day, so they couldn't play around with lighting. Oh. I'm like, fuck off. Damn Come it. on. Some of the best parts of the original Pacific Rim is them fighting in Tokyo, and what's lighting them yeah. is the fucking city. Yeah, the night fight. Like, and, and when they're underwater, like, not knowing where the kaiju are when they're, yeah. like, 50 billion leagues under the sea, that's some real shit. It's freaky. This time they're like, just put in the daylight. <laughs> We have to see all the Jaegers fight against the kaiju. Put some traffic in there. People are going to work. Everyone needs to see the sexy orange robot. She looks like a girl. And Ooh. she has swords. Look at the pink ranger operating a kaiju. Uh, fucked up. Okay, yeah, the, so don't the, see the it. Only don't thing, see the only thing uh, that they didn't do that was Power Rangers was fuse all the Jaegers together to create a giant Jaeger. Well... That's the where Jaegers they blew it. don't do that. That's where they blew it. The Jaegers don't do that. They don't do that? The Jaegers don't. I'm trying to be as conspicuous as possible. Rita Revolta. Make my monster grow! It's Charlie Day. Charlie Day is the villain. Oh, Charlie! He's in it. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going, I'm going deep. You I have to. I have this, to. This is what you do when you don't want people to watch it. Spoil so, all the plot. So Char- Charlie Day... Uh, has been brainwashed by the precursors after he dived into the kaiju brain from uh, the first movie. Yeah, right. And what he does now is when he goes home to his new fancy apartment because he got a massive promotion after that event. Was zapped by the alien brain? Like, he has literal mind fucks with a kaiju brain in his house. Oh. He connects his brain to the kaiju brain and he's just like, Oh, try! Oh no! So he's sitting on the corner watching the kaiju and the Jaegers fight each other, just going yeah, yeah, ah, fucking kill him, yeah. Wow, that sounds. That's the reveal. Charlie Day really, is the villain. That sounds really specially bad. Although I like as much as I love Charlie, Charlie as Day. Rita. As much as I love Charlie Day, yeah, yeah. He just he, he, he's not a villain. When you have him be Charlie Day, and don't 
change any complexity to the character, but then turn him evil? Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah, it's not going to get his personality stays the same. He's just evil now. Yeah, yeah. But it still makes you laugh. He's still neurotic and loud. And it makes you laugh. Like, just like, okay, come on. It's so hard to take it seriously because what made the first movie so serious is the fucking monsters themselves. That's a villain. Yeah. Okay, well, Pacific Rim 2, don't go see it. Not fun. It's a massive disappointment. Not good stuff. Okay, well, uh, I'll tell you, speaking of massive disappointments, I would like to, Greg, revisit a topic very briefly here that I uh, that I touched on last week. Uh, Jessica Jones Season 2 on Netflix. Ooh. And I want to just tell everyone that... That you love it. No. I, it's your favorite of the Marvel shows. Not that. Uh, you loved it more than Luke Cage. Um, no, didn't actually. You loved it more than Iron Fist. No, I can't say that either. Really? No. Yeah, I can't say that now. The thing is, what I wanted to say is that last week I was talking about it and I hadn't finished the season. I had like three episodes left, just three. So I felt okay speaking on it because, you know, over the course of 13 episodes, like the final three is is the last the last bit of it. Right. I was still kind of like into, you know, the goofy plots there were, even though it had been bad, I was still kind of curious as to where things would end up. And I will tell you now, after having finished the show to its entirety, that every plot line finds its own special pile of shit to crawl into at the end of the season. So just like the first one. It's worse than the first one. Because the first one, like, you know... Kilgrave dies and it's like you kind of wonder what's going to happen like in the world without Kilgrave like how Jessica's going to grow without that parasitic presence like going with her and all that stuff and everything that they opened up all the addiction stuff all the side plots that like all the characters and what they were doing it all wraps up like some kind of after school TV special the way that here, here's a perfect so exactly example. exactly what we thought it would do, like every other Marvel show so far. Yeah, yeah. and I, But I'll, I'll tell you that there's like some specially bad parts. One that sticks out in my mind specifically is it's the plot line with Trish, right? The talk show, the best friend, the bright bubbly one, the child star. The adopted sister. Yeah, exactly. She a, 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 a theme with her is that she's jealous of Jessica's superpowers. She wants to be the hero and like, but Jessica. Wait, flops. they had her turn into Hellcat this season. Uh, no, no, they they didn't. But I knew that she was supposed to turn into somebody. So that's kind of the direction that they were pointing everything. The whole season, she's hooked on the inhaler that the dude from the first season was pumping with. Like, there's this inhaler that she sucks, and it like. It, it, get, it makes her stronger and faster and just like Jessica, like mystery powers, but like she's addicted to it and she keeps it secret from everyone the whole show and she has to run around and find more supply and it's it's part of like that subplot stuff. It, it peaks with her running out of the, the inhaler runs out. She finds this doctor from the underground lair that was cranking out all these heroes, including Jessica. She finds a doctor from there and forces him, convinces him to perform surgery on her to try and awaken some superhero abilities. And it's a back alley surgery, too. It's like Batman 1, where the guy changes, like, the Joker's face, and he wakes up in the basement, and he, like, looks in the mirror, and the guy's like, you see what I have to work with? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just like that. You know, so, so it's, like, really back alley, and it's gross. Jessica comes upon the scene. Trish is mid-operation. There's, like, this 16 peg of needles that just lowers and squishes into her lower spine like that's the fucking secret surgery Uh. there's one machine he pulls a lever and 16 needles just get lowered into her spine she's just quivering and spewing blood everywhere (laughs) jessica runs up and rips the thing out of her and kills the doctor in the process trish goes into some coma right Fast forward to the last episode of the season. Trish has been on the hospital bed. She's pissed at Jessica for ruining the surgery, blah, blah, blah. End of the last episode, Trish is walking out of Jessica's apartment. She goes to the elevator. She's on her phone. She has a cup of coffee. She's being stupid Trish radio host lady. She gets bumped into by some like elderly woman. Slow motion. She falls toward the elevator. Phone falls out of her hand. Coffee cup falls out of her hand. Then all of a sudden, it cuts to her looking at something toward the ground with like an expression of incredulity, like, what? And she's caught her phone like on her boot. 
and she's just standing there with her iPhone on her boot, and she looks at it for, like, a full fucking minute. Like, just stares, like, you know, whatever. Then she flips it up and catches it and goes into the elevator. And that is the payoff to the Trish surgery addiction so the line. Next, so the next time she shows up, she's going to be Hellcat. Pro- basically, I suppose. But, I'm sorry. A fucking... You catching your fucking iPhone on your boot? That is the power reveal for, like, a hero now in Marvel? Hey, that's how Spider-Man was revealed, remember? Catching a phone on his boot? And no, he caught a lunch tray full of food and he pulled oh, the food yeah, back but, on Oh, yeah, but it. then he immediately started fighting a bunch of dudes and and got stuck with webs. There was well, they're more try- to they're it. they're trying to amp it up, man. They're trying to be like, here she comes! That was the end of the season! That's the cliffhanger! Yeah, they're, they're, to they're trying to set in. her up for the next season if they get paid enough, which they probably will. I hope they fucking don't! It was... If you could see Trisha's stupid fucking face looking at her phone boot, it was so... It was so bad! No, it, it, that sounds just like any other superhero reveal, though. If you'd seen if you'd seen it, you would know what I'm saying when I say that. Like, even just the, the lighting and the camera shot of it and the angle, well, that's it was bad. Shows- are fucking shot terribly. I know, and, and it's just so in, in in all the combination of all the bad elements of it, it all leads and like peaks at this god awful point. So I'm just all I wanted to say is basically like I just wanted to reiterate what I said last week. I, I was I left it a little bit open. For I was people. hoping for something so terrible like the girl who was being mind controlled by Kilgrave the whole season, who kills herself when Kilgrave wanted nothing to do with that he just didn't like what is killing herself due to Kilgrave? right yeah it I don't... stretches it stretches the season an additional four episodes that everyone hates pretty much yeah it, it it just it didn't nothing went anywhere no literally nothing went anywhere jessica didn't really evolve she like the I, I mean i guess the only thing that they try and make it seem like is she's ready to like be part of a family or a group now like at the end of the season she's gonna she's... have luke cage filler <laughs> Yes, great. We're all yeah, literally we're all looking no, forward to that's that. That's what that's what the next season of Luke Cage is going to be. Just I Jessica know. Jones showing up, and she's like, "I'm here to fill up four episodes." Also, I'm pregnant. <laughs> Pregnant. Well, that's that's literally all her character. Like, I hope her, she her, co- her comic. Like, I barely remember reading her comic. I did. I did read a few issues, but it seems like after she got knocked up by Luke Cage. That became her importance. Pregnancy. Just motherhood. Lu- just being Luke Cage's wife. Yeah, I know she's the wife. I knew she was the wife of someone in the comics, and like I- her powers have supposedly always been a little vague, I guess, but like they're, they're vague enough where they can just change it up every episode. She's strong enough to lift a car, but she's not strong enough to open a door. R- <laughs> not by herself, certainly. Come on, guys, where are your manners? Listen up, we have to add the patriarchy to every single episode. She can't be too strong. What do you think? She has a job or something? Mr. Lee, please, I just want her to have a solid power. That doesn't work in this industry, true believer. Excuse me, do you have her opening a bank account at her local bank? (laughs) Not in my issue, you don't. (laughs) Get back to your kitchen and start cooking, woman. Sorry, she can't vote until she... (laughs) That's right, that's right. That's her superpower. Uh, Yeah, okay. Think about that, that's what the the main uh, story of season three will be. How Jessica Jones helped everyone vote. And then she shits out a super baby, like from The Incredibles. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh, yeah, so don't watch that at all. I wanted to just reiterate that. I left it a little open last week for people that, like, fans of Marvel or whatever to watch it. I don't think anybody should watch this movie. I mean, it's just, or show, rather. It's just got awful. Yeah, all these Marvel shows just have gotten worse and worse and yes. worse and, I and don't, fucking worse. And I don't think that that trend is going to reverse. I think it's just going to continue the way that it's been going. I think if they just keep their shows to be five to eight episodes, it's the perfect length to do something. Totally. I mean, realistically, why would Netflix want to be paying for 13 episodes per series anyway? You should fucking you be doing like five or eight. It, and the more people that stream... The more episodes, that means they get more money. No, their money comes from subscriptions. That's it. The, no matter what anybody's watching, then they're how getting come profit. Brian is getting a sequel. I didn't think about that, loser. Did you? <laughs> no, I didn't. And that's even with Max Landis as the director and head writer. Well, that's that's all very interesting. What else is interesting, and a little bit of a lighter note. 
Greg and I... Is this a lighter note? Well, we'll find out, I suppose. Yeah. Greg and oh, I... You're, you're letting him burn. Oh, you're right. Sorry. I got a little amped up there. Thank you for turning that. He's, mm. it's, he's not charred on any side yet, so it's still good. I don't think I've seasoned him enough. Hold on a sec. Okay. Um, I don't really have salt and pepper. Oh, uh, uh, actually, I kind of got like things. No, there's a baggie. There's a baggie. Wait, Don, I got things. Oh, like you, I've got. What do you got? What do you got? Well, I've got this like big ball of dust in my pocket. It looks like there's a little cumin. It looks like there's uh some jimmies. I see glitter. Ooh, glitter might be nice. Yeah. Go ahead, throw some of that on there. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Dry rub. Oh, it's so juicy. That's what they say, right? It's dry rub. Mm. Mm. I don't oh. really. I don't see enough glitter used as dry rub. Presentation. Okay, yeah, you want. You don't want that on mm. your hands. Yeah. Uh, anyway, though, <clears throat> great job, great job. Um, so Greg and I, bef- just earlier today, before we, uh, you know, we decided to put Donkey on the spit here and all that. There's a, a movie theater that is um, that's kind of near where we're holed up right now in uh, in Logan Square, and it is um, there's kind of like a hole in the back of the theater, and so it's really I may have made it. Yeah, yeah. So may. I don't know how long it's gonna be there, but there was a hole. Uh, we just found it. You know, don't know how it got there, but we just found who, it. Who would have guessed? Oh, you. Sorry. You really got to be careful with that. I just got excited you're talking gonna, about the hole. You're going to end up putting a hole in your fucking face. You just keep resting your chin on it like that. Like, that's not good. Not good. Here, just let me let me put the cap back on. Maybe cap you know. it. There you go. There we go. I think that will, uh, I think that will. There you go. I think that'll do it. Definitely. You know what you should start doing? Keeping some spices in there. It's like a little thimble, you know? You turn yeah, that but around. The, but that would ruin the laser. Well, I mean, I could put it in my ring finger one. There you go. There you go. My middle finger is the knife one. Yeah, don't do that. Stop. All right. Uh, anyway, but before we did, so Greg and I walked into the through the hole into the movie theater, and they were showing a movie this afternoon uh, called Annihilation. And the movie uh, was starring Natalie Portman, um, Oscar Isaacs. Oscar Isaacs? Bernard from Santa Claus. Yes, yes. Never forget. And, uh, and yeah. I will so- never let him live that down. Didn't I didn't even realize that until you pointed it out, and I, I am still pretty floored uh, by that fact. I do know he was in uh, he was Apocalypse in that uh, X Men movie. He was uh, uh, yeah, which not not a not I a. Am, I am so disappointed considering the uh, the first two in that uh, in that film series was oh, so yeah. so good. Yeah. Oh, I know, I know that that movie the the third one ended up being terrible, but Annihilation though. Very, very interesting, unique, visually stunning. If if there was one thing I took away from this movie is that the visuals of it were really compelling. The special effects and the cinematography are solid. Really, really good. I mean, that's it's like enough of a reason in itself to watch the movie. It's the the premise briefly is that this you know as the audience that this extraterrestrial thing is crashed on Earth and now there's this area of effect essentially there's this like what they call the shimmer like a capri sun kind of veil yes it's like a bubble exactly exactly you can see it in the distance it's a giant like capri sun tsunami and it's just coming slowly towards this base and like people are like oh what is that it's like aurora borealis at this time of day, in this part of the country, yes. localized entirely in this lighthouse. Exactly, exactly. But you, you know, they're trying to figure out what it is. You, as the audience, know it came from outer space because they show it to you that way. But basically, but there's still not. We still don't know a whole lot about what the veil exactly is. Right. They they keep it t- tense and suspenseful by like keeping you in the dark. And the whole point of the movie is that Natalie Portman and this um a fellowship of like other women, like four other girls, they go in there as like soldiers and scientists to figure out what the deal is with this shimmer as they call it. Well, they're they're like the fifth unit to be sent in. Right. The previous unit had Natalie Portman, uh, her husband, who's played by Oscar Isaac. Right. He was one of the last people to uh, actually go into the Shimmer, and it seems like he lived. 
They don't know how, though. And at the beginning of the movie, he comes back, and he, you know, he's a little different. He's weird, obviously, and then he's... He, fu- he's, like, fucking disturbed. Then he starts puking up blood at the table, and Natalie Portman calls the uh, t- calls the ambulance, and when they're on the way to the and hospital... they're kidnapped by NASA. E- exactly. So it's, it's, it's pretty, you know, it's a little action-y at the beginning and stuff, and then it kind of settles down, and um, there's... Well, there is action in this movie, to, oh, yeah. to really solidify what this film is, I'd say it's sci-fi thriller. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would and agree with elements of body horror and some psychological horror in there too. Yeah. Like there are some. It's it's a really it, it was it's one of those movies written and directed by the same guy. It's very like an original, which sometimes can happen. It's an it's a very original piece when that's the case. It's just even though it was you know based on a book <laughs> even though it was based on a book yes but but like the style of this movie very sort of unique again like the look of everything and there were there were certain aspects of the story that were really really unique there's a there's a point there's one scene that's super tense where one of the characters is going a little bit crazy and she ties the other three up and they're trying to figure out what's happening and this creature comes in the house and it's like a bear with like a fucking skull on its face and the noise it's making is the... It can it can mimic the screams of a person it ate. Yes, and that has to do with the plot of the, of the movie overall, but essentially what you hear... And what the the characters hear are the screams of one of their party who has died. That the bear ate. Yes. That they watched eat. So the <laughs> so they they hear this scream and they think, oh, well, like what's this? And the girl runs out and it turns out to be the bear. And then it walks into the room and you see as it like goes up against like the you know starts sniffing around and and opening its mouth and making the noise that that's that that's the noise that it was making. It was coming from the bear and that part right there is very it was the nightmarish. bear who screamed for help yeah the bear who cried human it was uh help <laughs> help <laughs> yeah it was like it was it was human mixed with like then it would devolve into like a bear growl but for a minute in the middle there it was like human scream pretty fucked up so anyway the the point is is that there's some nightmarish parts of it but there's even a line in the movie when someone's asking Natalie Portman about her time in there, and she's like, it was weird, and he says, like, a nightmare, and she says, more like a dream, because there were parts of it that well, were beautiful, said, too. She, she says, uh, it felt like a dream, and then it cuts to, um, I forget the actor's name. His last name is Wong. He played one of the major characters in uh, Doctor Strange. And um, um, another Netflix show, um, Marco Polo. Yeah, he's, he's, the, uh, he's Attila the Kong. Kong. He's the Kong. Yeah, yeah, he's the... Did you say he was? He, did, were he's you about to say he's the Kong? That's, I think that's what I did say. <laughs> well, there's a, there's some there's another word for it that I'm missing. You, you combined Kai Khan? Kai Khan. That's that's you, what I was you thinking. You combined yeah. Khan with <laughs> Kong. Yeah, yeah, I with did. Hong. Yeah, he's the Kong. <laughs> he's the Kong. Isn't that what they refer? Isn't that what he's Hongs do- refer to as their leader? He was he was the dog toy, the big <laughs> red dog toy <laughs> Kong. He's, he's Kong. Yes. 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 Hopefully, I that's don't crawl into his brain. That's, that would suck. That's. But that's that's who he was. Anyway, though. But but that line. Yes. It's it, the movie is it's nightmarish, but then it's also beautiful. This it's gorgeous. Sh- this the, shimmer. The cinematography is very very good. And, um, something that we noticed too when we were watching it. Uh, so whenever it it shoots back into the world outside the shimmer. The way that the cinematography is done is it's very dull and drab. Nothing is oversaturated. Everything's grayish. But once they're actually in the shimmer, lots of bright colors pop out. Yep. The first that you notice is the like the flora, like or fauna, fauna, or fauna. yeah, yeah, of, of flowers, right? Grass shit. <laughs> That's more, nature. That's more eloquent. There you go. Uh, there's just beautiful flowers of like of multiple different colors just popping up all over the place and as the film continues more and more color starts to seep its way as the characters start to realize that whatever the shimmer is doing to the wildlife is now doing to their bodies right and they're also moving closer and closer to ground zero basically where the alien object landed and where all this stuff is spreading from and that's kind of why they're in there but it's just there's a lot of, there's so many cool visuals like we we mentioned that the bear is one of them there's a lot of colors and like there's a there's a point when they come upon this uh clearing and there are a bunch of plants 
in the shape of humans yeah. and that's just how they've grown and it's like this one of the characters makes a realization about what it's doing based on the formation of these plants it's like these giant tree root mannequins and it's it looks very very cool like it's but it it's unsettling like, yes the whole film wants you to feel very very uncomfortable in this world because as they start to discover what exactly is happening in the shimmer like the reveals uh and and like i said before the body horror really adds to like this the whole atmosphere and story to it i really like this movie me a too lot. me too and it's a fucking shame that this movie came out the same fucking weekend as black panther which is pretty much why we have decided it didn't do in the box office as well as it probably otherwise no, it would didn't. have there have been thousands of other movies that have done that before i think one i remember a lot don't make fun of me 2011 it was the summer and Harry Potter just came out. The uh -huh. final episode. It was Ooh, the very last movie. Deathly Hallows Part 2. Disney also released Winnie the Pooh oh. the same weekend. And it was destroyed. It is one of the lowest box office growths for any Disney movie. But you like Winnie the Pooh? I love Winnie the Pooh. I haven't seen it, so I don't know anything about the it. The 2011 version is amazing. Oh, bother. Oh. Rabbit. Well, hello there, Pooh boy. <laughs> yes. Do you want? Do you see where the honey is? The wonderful thing about tiggers. It's on my spring. <laughs> why don't you go ahead and lick it off? <laughs> and that's why kids didn't really see that movie. They yeah. Were like, oh, let's go see Harry Potter. It'll be less traumatizing than a a stuffed tiger <laughs> raping a bear. Than, than a teddy bear licking a honey off a stuffed at tiger. That, at that point, when the Pooh started screaming, help! And Christopher Robin had a circle jerk with himself. Yeah, that Pooh was... Bear, Pooh Bear ended eating uh, Christopher Robin, and when Tigger thought that he heard Christopher Robin's voice, it turns out it was just Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> because that's what happens in the 100 Acre Wood. The, G the DNA of all the species all blends the together. <laughs> Piglet has like seven rows of teeth. <laughs> Kanga and Rue have become one they bee. They fuse, they fuse. <laughs> Oh yeah, Gopher is like <laughs> Gopher gigantic. Has, no, Gopher has melded into the ground. His hole is now just that gross fungus hole. And they have to go visit him <laughs> every time they want to consult him about engineering or some shit. They just have to go find him. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, I can see why that. That's an interesting take on Winnie the Pooh. I uh, I'll have yeah, to I check that I out. I didn't expect him to go that dark. I'll have to check that out. But uh, but anyway, uh, but it's I, very good. I like that version a lot. And as is Annihilation. Annihilation, the movie with Natalie Portman, very Phenomenal very movie. good, very it's, good. It's also amazing too because the entire cast is female. Like the entire expedition is female. And and that's that's a point that we all that Greg and I also were making as we were like talking about it just before we started recording here is basically with all the female empowerment that's happening. Happening right now just just in the world and in the country the kind of like revolution that's that we're witnessing this movie i think highlights that really really well it, it's it's literally like a mix of like it's alien and and like and predator and and, and like they're these soldier scientists it has, a, it has a little bit of a rival in it too yeah yeah there, it's this female power squad that is exploring this alien inhabited forest trying to find out what's happening in order to save the earth and they are the main they are the heroes of this movie and it's badass they're all great characters it's it, you're they're who they are whom you feel for as this movie story goes on. And they're all relatable because they're the whole struggle of them is they all lost something or they're all like denied by society. Yes, and they kind of represent different kinds of people. They're different they're different types and I they I mean like the the coolest thing too is that like Natalie Portman as a main character, she she's a former soldier. Right, exactly. So she knows what she's fucking doing. She's she's super smart and she's fucking super talented and badass. Yeah, so she ends up she she's pulled into this expedition by her, you know, husband who, you know, she didn't even know anything about his mission until he shows up at the house and starts puking blood and she gets she gets hooked in that way. But once she's aware of the situation, she turns out to be the perfect, you know, hero for that squad. The perfect person to go and find out what the fuck happened to my husband. Exactly, which is what her motivation is, and she wants to come back. But it's really cool, and definitely won't spoil anything. But I will no, say because this is this is a must. I think this is a must watch. This is 
one of my favorite movies I've seen in 2018 so far. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Hands um, down. I, it's a fantastic movie, and I wish more people fucking talk about it. Yeah, well, and again, I'm hoping that... Again, and our, that, our problem, too, is also that we're about a month late. <laughs> we're a month late, and, you know, we don't talk to many, like, maybe normal people are talking about it. Nobody in our Normies, circles is talking about it. Uh, no, Nobody on the street. Yeah, exactly. People with, with jorbs. Uh, and, and, and bank, and bank accounts and stuff like that. But, uh, anyway, anyway, I will say, yeah, but like, it's, it's, it's just cool. It's cool on a lot of levels, visually stimulating. There are these sweet fucking cotton candy trees everywhere. It's like, just the bright colors There's and an stuff are really cool. And he's got like six rows of teeth and yeah. he looks like a worm. And he's like white and he like moves real fast and stuff and then just runs up on the beach and he's <laughs> way to spoil the whole movie. That's the ending. An alligator crawls out of a hole and goes, <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Well, everyone knows now. Shit. Well, now, now, if you wanted to push people away from the movie further, here it is now. Damn it. The, re the reveal that the alligator was the villain the whole time. Yep. And then Winnie the Pooh crawled out of the swamp. Help me. <laughs> Christopher Rabbit. <laughs> Pooh Bear. The fuck is wrong with you? The fuck is wrong with you there, Pooh Boy? Just get back down there. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, so Sounds yeah. Sounds like it's time for me to spring into action. Yes, and I'm gonna spring into action on this spit right here. I think we're just about, uh, ready to, uh, cut some meat off of this, uh, spit here, homeboy. You ready to, you ready to chow down on oh, our hell former... yeah, I'm done with this shit. You guys can, can eat your fucking Whole Foods garbage. We're gonna enjoy some nice ass burro. Some nice ass ass. You know what I'm saying? You well, know I mean, what it, I'm saying? That was the joke. Burro. Yeah. Burro. yeah. So anyway, We're turn this burro into a burrito. Yes, I, I'm actually gonna make a burrito. I brought some. That's what I was gonna tell you earlier. There's a bag in the corner there. I brought a bunch of. Oh. I bought a bunch of supplies. Look at. I got stuff for burritos and tacos, tortillas, fucking lettuce, tomatoes, cheese. Where did you get those, dude? That literally that bag was being tossed out of this Cermat grocery store. All I saw was the lettuce and tomatoes and cheese kind of poking through the side of the garbage bag. So I just grabbed it. There was some other crap in there too. You know, it's really unfair that like things just fall out of windows and it's a okay for you. Like like those those chicken and waffles that just fell out of a window and you just ate them out of a dumpster. Great. It was great. Meanwhile, I have to go into a Kohl's and literally fire my finger lasers at people well, to get what I want. Here's I've told you this before. I am constantly on the lookout. I mean, I am vigilant. I'm always, every time I see a window, especially one that's cracked, I'm always expecting something to fall out of it. Sometimes it's not edible. Sometimes it's something gross. Sometimes it's a person. And sometimes it's 100% unfair. Well, that's why we're a good team. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, considering I can actually do this now. Wee! Oh, let me wipe that screen off there. Sorry, I smudged it. That's fine. I'll... There you go. Okay, cool. Here, you go ahead and start your burrito. Uh, anyway, Greg and I recommend Annihilation. Yeah. Definitely want oh. to check that movie out. Visually stunning. Uh, thriller. Kind of cool. Uh, do not watch Jessica Jones Season 2. Just not worth it. Doesn't really or plug Pacific it. Pacific Rim. Don't watch Pacific Rim 2 either. Pacific Rim 1, not bad. Pacific Rim 2, don't watch it. And uh, and that's kind of where we're at for this week. Yeah, fuck off, losers. Yeah. You're supposed to roll the burrito up, not just chew in the middle of it like a fruit roll-up. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Uh, anyway, thank you again for stopping by. Uh, you can reach out to us, Boxcar Buddies, on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, you can email us anytime at boxcarbuddiespodcast at gmail.com. We appreciate you every week, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Take care, eat well, and be safe. <laughs> and I got some hot sauce. Check this out. Oh! Ooh, it's in your eyes, too. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Ah, I, my got, face! I got a little excited. Ah, 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 oh. Ah, ah, oh, your metal ah, hand. Ah, 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 oh, stop! Stop! No! I can't see! Hold it down! Take it easy! Ah!